countdown to Crawfish Fest. We're less than a week out. It's crawfish season. Look at this. They're perfect these days. This is what we're talking about. It just started a little bit later. We're ready to go, though. We have three of my favorite crawfish folks in this city. We're going to sit down and talk to them. We're looking at different styles. We're talking about different textures, different flavors. All right, let's do this. This one hour show, just about crawfish all throughout the city. We've got some really cool people here today, some good friends of mine. Corey from Crawfish Noodles, Brooks from BB's, Lucas from right here, Josephine's. These three guys really put crawfish into this city, not just in numbers, but in deliciousness. And so we're gonna talk about styles here in a little bit, but we're on our countdown to Crawfish Fest. Crawfish Shack's gonna be out there boiling for us. Corey's gonna be out there as well. Crawfish Shack in four walls. I have to go through more crawfish than anybody in the state. I mean, I think that combined, you're way over that. But I think it's pretty impressive. So we're gonna check out Crawfish Shack real quick. All right, so we're out here at Crawfish Shack in Crosby, Texas. This place, I learned from Billy Link, who's a crawfish farmer in Crowley, Louisiana. He said, have you been to this place? They go through hundreds of sacks of crawfish daily. Most people go through like 20. On a busy day, this place is doing 180 sacks of crawfish. Corn, potatoes, mushrooms, boiled eggs. Let's get in and try this. I can't wait, so excited. The Crawfish Shack in Crosby, Texas. Arguably the most crawfish cooked in the US. On a busy day, how many pounds are we talking? Boiling 6,000 pounds. A day? A day. That's boiled here for our dine-in customers, our to-go customers, and drive-thru. <laughs> That's not catering off-site, too. Correct. That is not catering. That's just through this building at one in one day. That is correct. I can't even fathom that. And then we also sell a lot of sacks of crawfish for people to boil their own. Oh, so you so sell? Live. Okay, cool. Right. A lot of people drive a long distance to get our crawfish because they also want our seasoning. There's a hundred ways to cook crawfish, but it's only going to be as good as the flavor. So I changed my recipe 13 times. It's got 19 ingredients, lowered my salt content three times. It doesn't have a lot of preservatives. Yeah, most of it just blasts you with sodium. Right. But the salt, to me, takes away from all the flavor. Because every time I lowered my salt content, the flavor just came out more and more. So we sell a lot of seasoning here. I mean, I'm gonna get some before I leave. There you go. I mean, why would yeah. I not? The flavor is just amazing. That's, I think, is the number one reason for the volume that we do here and the success over the 20 years that we've been in business. 20 years? Yep. What made you do this? Background, I'm Cajun, and I grew up on a farm in Louisiana, so I had crawfish ponds basically in my backyard. I was at uh, college at, at USL in Lafayette. Um, had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, got a job at a Hilton hotel as a server in the restaurant and just immediately fell in love with the restaurant business. So I switched my major to restaurant management, transferred from USL to U of H. So that's what brought me to Texas. Got my degree, met my wife. My plans were to move back to Lafayette and open a seafood restaurant. Yeah. Well, she said I'm never leaving Texas. So oh, those were not her plans. <laughs> All right. So I said, well, if I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna do crawfish. Crosby's been an amazing place to start our business. The youth here are amazing because 80% of our, of our employees here are uh, high school or recently graduated high school. Yeah. So uh, it's great young kids here. They work for their money. They pay for their, their truck note, their insurance. College, so, uh, whatever it may right. be. Right, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of kids that go to Texas A&M that come here on the weekends and work. This is the community, right? It you is. are a community. We're very, very involved in the community, yes. That's, that's a beautiful thing. When you opened this in 2004, Four. it was a much smaller footprint. It was only to go. So what was that like starting that off? The first year, I really didn't think we were going to make it. Uh, the first day was actually really good that we opened. We boiled, I think, six sacks. The second day, we only boiled one sack. Stuck with it. The second season, we added a couple of tables. Third season, a couple more tables. And then the third season is when it really took off. On an average Saturday, how many people come through here? Uh, I'd say probably seating over 2,000. And it's just crushing all day long. Just go, 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 go. We start off the season with drive through only for the first month because we're not able to get the volume of crawfish in January that we would need to satisfy everything. Like as you start, like the beginning of the season, they just line up. 
Yeah, they start lining up at 8 o'clock in the morning. So a lot of times we'll open at 3 o'clock and we'll already have 50, 60 cars in line. It's exciting. It's, uh, I love the beginning of the season. It's, it's a happy time. So this is my happy place. You know, nobody doing what you're doing. Nobody's boiling the amount that we do. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. But it's taken 20 years to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, you, you go back to year one where it was like one sack on the second day and you're like, right. where am I at? And then yeah. 20 years later, there's no way that you can look at it and say, we're going to be doing 180 sacks a day. No, never dreamed that was possible. I, and, and it just can continue, really. It's not just you doing this. Your family's all here, too. Yes, and that's probably one of the biggest blessings we have is, of course, my wife and I are partners in this. She works a ton. She does a lot of the behind the scenes. Our two daughters work here and manage here. Our son-in-law works here. Our father-in-law works here. Well, not that your your daughters are involved into it too, and they love it, I'm sure. It will not give you and your wife a chance to like not do it at one point and your kids can take over. So that's our goal in the near future is get to pass on something that's near and dear to our heart. You know, this is my baby. I never, never could imagine selling it. Where are you sourcing crawfish from? All of our crawfish come from between Lake Charles and Crawley. That area of Crowley between Lake, Lake Charles is like the perfect ecosystem. Yes. Right? It really is. There's nothing like that. That's where you grew up mm -hmm. and you're just gonna stick to where you came from. Correct. So three of my wholesalers I actually went to high school with <laughs> in Crawley, Louisiana. So they take really, really good care of me. You still eat crawfish? Every day, but in January, February, March, even April, I eat them every single you day. You love it. I love them. So your method for cooking heavily seasoned water? Right, we season our water with our seasoning and liquid crab boil. Yep. And then we also season them after. So we dump them in a tub, we add more seasoning in the tub, mix them up, put the lid on them, let them steam in there. Because it starts to come away from the shell a little bit. When you pull them out right away, season them real quick, and add, you put the lid on right away, it traps the steam in there. So it pushes a lot of juice inside the head, so it makes them real juicy. All right, I want to see what's going on in this place. These guys are back here culling through crawfish. We're going to take the small ones and dead ones out, and we're going to resack the large crawfish. So these sacks will be full of large, live, clean crawfish, but that's not the final process. Then they go into our aerator tank. Aerating tank. Aerating tank, right. What is an aerating tank? I'll show you. This is like a big jacuzzi for crawfish, and they're getting air from the PVC pipe that's pushing through it. We usually leave, in, leave them in here for an hour and a half to two hours. So if I wanted to come up and buy a sack of crawfish. So you can buy this crawfish right here. This is what we consider purged select. So these are washed and grated. We take the small ones and dead ones out. We resack the large live crawfish. They go into here. When they come out of here, this is considered purge select, ready to boil. So this is arguably the greatest spot to buy sacks of crawfish for your household. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. In this area, I haven't seen this anywhere. I can literally have the water boil and come out, grab it and go. That's right, these are ready to put in the pot. That's amazing. That is such a, a game changer for so many people, including myself. You wanna see the, uh, they're probably, uh, as you can see how dark the water is. The, uh, we put plenty of seasoning in the water. Go ahead and pull this batch out. We're gonna add more seasoning in the tub. We'll mix it in real well and let it steam. Smart. I wanna go through the drive -thru. Okay. And I'm gonna order some stuff. Okay. You okay. with that? Yes, sir. All right, this is gonna be Absolutely. awesome. Five pounds, some sausage, corn, all that stuff. Seasons. Ooh. Medium, spicy, most Let's spicy. Let's go spicy. I can say that this is the first time I've ever gone through a drive through for crawfish. And I cannot wait. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. I couldn't wait to get home. I got what I need right now. I brought my own little crawfish pan. <laughs> Perfect little packaging. Brown paper back. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Perfectly seasoned. Potatoes look great. The egg. Look at that. That is awesome. But look at this. Seizing all up in it. Perfect.
Letting them steam just gives it that beautiful moisture that you're looking for. Man, that's perfect. For those of you who don't know, twist. Right, look at all that beautiful fat in there. Right? Now I'm a I'm a crusher. So I get all of that in there. And then this, I just pinch the tail right at the end. Right? Perfect. I'm glad I just went with the spicy. If I'd have done the most spicy or the mo most spicy, I'd be in trouble. Man, this is worth the 25 minute drive. I'm glad we came out. Learned a lot, saw a lot, spiced enough, maybe cry a little bit. I'm gonna get these back to the wife. I'll see you in a little bit, baby. Mm. All right, we gotta go. Up next, you might call them generational crawfish savants. We visit a crawfish farm in South Louisiana where crawfish is the family business and has been that way for hundreds of years. Restaurants all around Houston are put their own spit on crawfish using these delicious little bites in ways you might not expect. Like my alma mater, Brennan's of Houston. And this dish has been on the menu since I worked there. It's fantastic. They got a crawfish enchilada. No boiling or peeling needed for this dish. Pull up a seat, sit back, relax, enjoy this enchilada. We're on our countdown to Crawfish Fest. This season has been kind of tough out of the gate. How do you see it now? I mean, being in Houston, the demands there right now. It started, the demand was very slow in the beginning. I don't know for y'all, but uh, I think originally just the, all the press and all the craziness just kind of kept people away. But what we're seeing now is demand is, is back. I feel it's back. Uh, I just wish the prices would reflect better on it. But on a farming perspective, right? Last year, farmers didn't really make a lot of money because in the past few years, we've seen the price so low that it's hard for them to justify it as well. On an agricultural standpoint, if we don't support this, they're just gonna stop at some point. What is the importance of like crawfish farmers and knowing where you're, or your suppliers? Like that's key, yeah? Yeah, they're, they're partners, they're our partners. I mean, we treat them as such. We, we need them, they need us. Yeah, I've been with mine for over a decade. A decade and you probably about the same. Yeah, I mean, we're working with some really good guys and their livelihood depends on this every day that, you know, that we're gonna sell what we need to order and that we can order more the next week. I went out to Crowley, Louisiana to talk to Billy Link, who's a good friend of mine. His family farm's been there since 1820. I thought it was really inspirational and motivational and to see the work that goes into that. It's a lot. That's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of work. They love it though. We yeah, we're just getting out here. Crowley, Louisiana. Yep. You made us lunch. That's right. And that's one of the sweetest things ever. I say, in, in South Louisiana, that's what we do, baby. <laughs> Billy Bar's Crawfish Etouffee. That's what I like so to call I, it. And I think that something that's here that's very unique is this pot as well. You know you're in Southern hey. Louisiana when you see these <laughs> pots. You're right. Uh, Your crawfish. My crawfish tails, yes. You know, growing up as a kid, it was always rice and soybeans. We didn't introduce crawfish until I was probably, probably mid-80s. But back in the 80s, the our main market was the wild crawfish, which was in the trough flyer. Mm -hmm. That's where it all started from. So it was, so it was getting out of a boat in the basin. Yeah, the trap and, and that's, and that's where it really just started. And then, just, and then the rice fields came in a little later. Yeah, you know, the sustainability is unreal because we can do rice and crawfish. You, you, you never know year each so. year what the season's gonna look like. Yeah, it's different every year. And, Mother Nature brings us, I mean, curveballs, knuckleballs, you name you, it. The economy can, yeah. Not go your way. We're having a hard time. It's not, it's not normal, and uh, we, we're making it. You know, we're making it. Got to fight it. Yeah. It's in our blood, and that's what I do. Is it a generational thing? Like you kind of just kind of okay. I'm gonna do this. My yeah, father I'm gonna do did this. this. My grandfather yeah. did this. Yeah. Like, and basically, yeah, it's in my blood. But because I asked you but, suddenly and before he left, and he was like, "It's in my blood." <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. You talking about the like the history oh. of links, but links, we can trace back uh, 200 years ago here in Louisiana. So I got these papers here. Well, it uh, literally is dated June 1828. So it shows you. Oh, it's so, so beautiful. The, yeah, so this is this is, was an, an auction that went on back in the early 1820s. This is beautiful. And then you can see the mark, you got the X, mm -hmm. you know? There's people that didn't know how to sign a name, but look, 
But William Lang knew how to sign his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of neat having it. I mean, just Something the history. Old, so it showed that he was here. To know uh, that your family's been here for 200 years. 200 years. But this is where I grew up. The Link community. So, I mean, but yeah. think about when we when we were at the house and we were looking at this document. Is this where they where the family kind of settled into? Right around in here? Yes. Yes. It's history out here. Yes. Not, not too many people can say that this is where my family yes. ended. And we're still going. And we're still going. And we're not... Uh, not anywhere now. And we're not folding. <laughs> I mean, because it's, it's in our blood. We This is what we love to do, you know? We, probably the southern part of Acadia Parish is one of my, my farms. Uh, I call it the little farm. You can look right here. We got I got my young rice. I had some jasmine rice I got grown here. It's, and then you look to your right and you see the crawfish ponds. Then once we're done here, then we're going to be jumping over and we're going to be harvesting rice. We wait till that rice gets kind of hard, it gets tall. And then we come into water and we establish the flood. And naturally the, the crawfish at the time, they'll start to bury. It's seasonal, so they'll know when it gets real hot, they'll start burying along the edges. Like right here, you see Chris. When they dig in their hole, they're, they're pushing all this mud out and it, and it, 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 it develops, like we call it a crown, you can, a mound, but you can pull it up. You can see a hole underneath. But it probably, look, here we go. Nice. Just gotta dig for the hole. And it's, it, it may go three, four feet down. Going to hibernation during the summertime. And then around September, October, once we finish harvesting rice, uh, that's when they're gonna come out with the, with the little babies. And, and hopefully the time we start pumping up on our crawfish ponds, we, we, the timing be right for them to come out. And hopefully they survive. Mother Nature be good on us. You know, we, we, we strive for quality. When, when, when it's harvest time in August, that rice is gonna be this tall. Okay. So when we harvest it, you know, you're gonna harvest half of it. So you're gonna have your stubble left. And then you're gonna have a second growth of rice that's gonna come up. You have a second crop. So that's very important. So you're gonna have green growth and you have your stubble. A lot of food. And that, to me, that's what gives a good flavor of crawfish. You know, that, that sweetness you have on that fat. A lot of people like to call it fat, but it's not a fat. It's, it's, like, it's a gland. To me, that flavor changes certain areas of Louisiana. I think, in my opinion, in rice fields, it's the best. Yeah. It just fits perfect for us here in southwest Louisiana. We got the perfect ecosystem. Let's head to, uh, we're going to go in the back. We're going we're to go. take you to one of the ponds. We're going to head out in the crawfish boat. We'll get on a boat. Yeah. It's a boat with wheels. Amphibious boat with wheels. We just go from pot to pot to pot. Yep. And yep. just dump a table yep. and. Yep. Yep. One trap there, one trap out after another. Is there a bait? The most part of the season, we like to use fish. Fish is, fish gets them to the trap. And uh, that's what we like to use. And then later in the season, we start, we start going from fish to artificial. And you you want to you want to get what you can to the market as fast as you can. Yeah, when the catch is there, you gotta you gotta you gotta get it. Crawfish farming is all about timing. It's all about timing. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time. Hey, on a first time? Farm. I was gonna say, I said you've probably been in it before. No, never seen this before. I'm so excited. This is called like a basket wheel, and what I like about the basket wheel, it it doesn't uh, penetrate the ground. It's it's easy on the ground. You're not. You're yeah, not, you're, you're not treading it up. You're not treading it up because when we drain the fields, we got work. You still got a, you got rice to go. All right, we can't see how a boat with wheels. All right, all right. I'm gonna start it up. Start it up. Yeah. So this is my foot control. This is what steers my boat. And what's nice about it, I can use my hands for other things, uh, catching crawfish. Cross the levee, that that comes that comes in handy. That's how you get it. It, it gives that power to to kind of slide off that levee. All right, let's go. Yeah! <laughs> this is basically what's left after you process rice. Yeah, this this is what this is called last year's rice crop. But this is also feed. Feed. Yep. This is what they're eating on. This yep. is what they're. What algae, that color? yeah, the algae growth, uh, everything that's on it, 
Uh, that's what they feed off of, and it, it decomposes over time. And oxygen, oxygen is very important too. We depend on oxygen levels for those small ones, because when the mamas come out, come out their bur burrows, they uh, they start dropping their little babies. Yeah. And it's important that the oxygen levels it's are, it's are there. good. If not, you're suffocating everything. Yeah, you, you're killing everything. Yeah. When we come out here and we see what the work goes into it, see how much effort goes into it, you have to understand that that comes with a cost, the increased cost of what you're having to do. That's why you see the increased cost of crawfish at the end consumer. It's actually a beautiful thing to support you guys. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Yeah, this, these are the crawfish that's being caught today. They're just coming out the rice fields now, Chris, and they they weighing them. Come on now. Come on now. Like this right here is considered like probably about an eight count, eight count, like eight to a pound. Yeah. They take a lot out of the ground. Yeah. And over time, these ponds get old. And you lose your size over time. That's why we, it's important that we rotate. As farmers, we, we strive like rice and crawfish, rice and crawfish. Well, because this is your livelihood for the That's generation. It. You have to be a steward of the earth. That's it. It's beautiful. Yeah. And you got some bigger than that in that sack. Get back in with your buddies. There you go, buddy. So how many pounds of crawfish per year off of each acre do you want to see? It makes this very viable. Yeah. Right? Dude, we strive for at least a thousand pounds an acre. When we see them, there's like selects, there's field runs, yes. there's, yes. how do you go about grading? Well, you know. And then peelers it, was a new thing for me. These crawfish here, these are like a, a select field run. They, 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 they. Really? They're gonna be, they're gonna be called a select because they all big crawfish. Yeah, these are beautiful. And, like when someone says a field run, what is that? It, it's just straight out, it's straight out the field. It it's doesn't not really even, matter. It's, it's not true. graded. And, and they can be graded that way too. You can have a large field run which is more large, consistent large crawfish. Or you can have a, a average field run, which is a consistent large, medium, small mix. I mean, that's beautiful. My hand would be the scale. Right. Up next, Crawfish Boil Basics, a beginner's guide to preparing your own crawfish feast when Eat Like a Local Countdown to Crawfish Fest continues. On the menu at Little's Oyster Bar, crawfish croquettes. Basically a delicious combination of crawfish and all sorts of goodies. All that fried, serve a little spring peas. That's what I'm talking about. Sitting at Josephine's in Midtown, at Lucas from Josephine's of course, Brooks from BB and Corey from Crawfish and Noodles. Three of my favorite places for crawfish. And it is crawfish season, it makes me so excited. And one of the cool things that we're gonna do is like look at the different styles, right? Because I don't think that, not that I know of, has anybody gotten like three very important crawfish people in one building at one time to actually have the conversations? Have you guys ever sat and talked? No. Never. Never. No? So I feel like this might be the first. And I'm kind of excited because each of you do it so uniquely different. It's similar, but it's very different. I kind of want to delve into the South. We don't need to talk about all the secrets that happen. I'm cool with that, but just like the stylistically what your favorites are, how you do it. Because you do wet. 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 And you do a dry and a wet. I do dry and wet, yeah. But dry is what you grew up with. It is. And by dry, I mean boiled, soaked, seasoned. Right. Right? Yeah. And We've you adapted guys it are... a little bit to put a little dry spice on the outside, but that's not how I grew up. But yeah. You grew up just That's soaked. a Houston thing, yeah. Soaked, yeah. So. And I think it's kind of cool that like everybody pays respect to everybody else's style. And I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty amazing. So I'm excited about this. So we're going to go boil crawfish. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, let's go check out the boys in the kitchen, talk about style, see how they do their crawfish, like how do they do this magical toss, soak, whatever they're doing. I wanna see what they're doing because you don't get this opportunity too often. For me, what the most exciting part about this is these three gentlemen who I consider very, very close friends and family to be able to sit and have a conversation for the first time about something that they all have in common. It's amazing. Like this right here, this whole conversation? That's pure respect for each other. 
let's start with Lucas. Lucas's style is very much kind of what we all grew up with, the traditional Gulf Coast boil house, right? And then you've got Corey that does a Vietnamese style. It's his seasoning blend. I don't know what's in it. I'm not gonna ask. I'm just, I'm all right with it. That's just pure grade French butter right there. Because it's freaking delicious. And then Brooks kind of does both, right? Seasoned water, but will also go into a soak, but also will do his version of a wet based blend. So it's a butter based with the seasoning garlic and what have you. Special blends that they do themselves. You've got Cajun, Via Cajun, and Tex Cajun. It's awesome. Up next, a combination of cultural flavors. The Via Cajun craze, satisfying crawfish lovers across Houston. And consider this your mid-show reminder. The Eat Like a Local Crawfish Fest is this Saturday. Join me and a lot of KPRC2 folks you'll recognize at Discovery Green. Scan this QR code to purchase your tickets. I'll see you there. And hey, if you don't take a picture of it, it didn't happen. Show us your crawfish photos by uploading the proof to click2pins.com. Ramen Tatsuya, this little outpost from Austin, right here in Montrose. Put a ramen on the menu, twist the crawfish, it's called the Kramen. Spicy crawfish, pork bone broth, and dewy. Just a few of the ingredients to get you going. That's what I'm talking about. These guys make a delicious bowl of noodle soup, and when you put spicy crawfish and their pork bone broth, you're in for happy flavors. All right, so we got crawfish, cook best coming up on us real quick. But today, sitting here at Josephine's, and, and again, super honored to have the three of you here. Like, just two, three people that I look up to and say, you know what, they're doing this right, they're sourcing it right, they're cooking it right. You know, to sit back and talk about stylistically, like what you do, tell me. The classic dry right here, this is one that, you know, I kind of grew up on. We boil and soak all of our crawfish. You can get it wet as well, but uh, I think that originally we do this really well and then you can add on the wet sauce. So what's the style, what's your style? This is our signature, our Tex Orleans style, and it's a wet dry combo. We use our, our wet our butter paste and then our dry spice and just mix it until it's just in. You use your own blend of seasoning. Yeah. You use your own blend of seasoning. Yep. You use your own blend of seasoning. What's your style? Uh, this one's a bit Cajun right here. So it has Louisiana influences, a lot of Louisiana spices as well. The big difference for us is we season our crawfish after the fact. Yeah. So we, we put us, also use a lot of our Vietnamese spices as well. So we get them pretty much shipped from Vietnam and then we use some of the Louisiana spices here in the States as well and then we'll mix it together up top. And you can just go clear water, salted water for the most part. Oh, uh, we can, yeah. You don't use like a heavily seasoned, like what I grew up knowing as a crawfish boil, right? Right. Season the water. Right. It's got liquid crab boil in it. It's got salt. It's got everything else. It's got citrus. But your dad told me once. <laughs> Let's see if this holds up. <laughs> Trung, I'm looking at you, buddy. Um, you know, he said, well, the Vietnamese love the sweetness of the crawfish, and that's what they're looking for. They have the flavor on the outside, but the, the sweetness of the meat. And that's a very big difference. Yeah. Right? Because you're seasoned water. Right. You're seasoned water. Correct. No, salt. Yeah. Maybe. A little. But and a lot of garlic. Yeah, it's a stupid amount of garlic. Every time I eat with you, I'm like, mm, humans shouldn't consume this much garlic, but I literally do. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's what makes it great. All right, so we're going to get over to Crawfish and Noodles and really kind of get to the story of like what you guys do. Let's do it. All right. Sitting here with Chung Nguyen, Crawfish and Noodles. One of the places that I find very near to my heart, and not just the food, but the people your family, your staff. But I want to talk more about your history. Yeah, what brought you to Houston? Brought to Houston is totally, is unexpected. During the Vietnam War, at the end of 1975, the South Vietnam had lost the war, and we become the prisoner of war. Because we are on the South side who fight for American side. Being tortured, I don't know, but my dad, no. He being arrested and he being detained, and he come in with a lot of pain when he get released. So we escaped. We left Vietnam since 1987. That when I was 17 years old. You're 17 years old. You know exactly what's happened. You know it's like, okay, son, we're leaving. Yep. We're gone. So my dad is the coordinator of the escaping for us. We escaped like four or five times. Didn't succeed, but the last trip, it fortunate enough that we did 
successfully deport Vietnam. We were skeptical to international water. If you're lucky enough, you get like the, the, battle, the, the, the U.S. battleship cross by, uh, Philippines or whoever the, in the, in the international water can rescue you. If the destination is to go to Pulau Bidong, uh, one of Indonesia refugee camp. We want to go to America because uh, my dad, he was in the Navy with the United States. Yeah. So we have more benefit than other people in the refugee camp that we transfer to Philippines. For us to study English, to study social, to study culture, U.S. culture, and how to become a U.S. Uh, resident. And then to Houston. My uncle family was here, uh, so they, they sponsored us to be in Houston. A lot of Vietnamese, when they, when they escaped from Vietnam, came to Houston. Yeah, that's, that's why Houston became today, because it's like the second largest of a Vietnamese refugee. And it's what makes our landscape of our city so amazing, right? The food is so much better, like the people, very open and... and it's true. You know, a very simple life, you know, you, you can just go work, go to eat, go home, relax, take care of the family, and to that, be reside in the United States, that is the benefit that we have. I'm glad you're here. What got you into this crazy business? This crazy business is totally nonsense. I remember 2008. That's the craziest year that is economy collapse. Yeah. But I chose the craziest year to go into business. How smart is it? <laughs> yeah. What made you say crawfish is what you wanted to do? Because when I went to Vietnam, there's not any crawfish. So it's not something you grew up with. No. But what you did grow up with, and what I experienced seeing there, is there's certain parts of the neighborhoods where this is where oak or the snails, and this is the place where the shrimp are, and this is the place. But it was communal eating. People sitting together, picking, slowly eating, but having communications. Yeah. You've given people a space to be able to do that. Is that what just made you decide crawfish was a thing? At that moment, I didn't know that's going to happen. Okay. I didn't have that vision. In that time, there's not many crawfish places open. No. And the only crawfish places that were open were traditional, like, Louisiana boil houses. Yep. In that moment, I'm working in Louisiana, Lake Charles. That is the place of where the crawfish come from. Yeah. A lot of Vietnamese people coming up there and eat crawfish. I think that's the opportunity for us to have it in Houston. But my main customer is Vietnamese in the Bel Air area. We have to think of how to bring it in, the kind of food that at the end of the weekend, the people get together, sit, pew, talk. That's is Vietnamese culture. I want to create that culture. We want to create it something that for the people can get together, can eat crawfish in the Vietnamese style. That's key. You can come in and hit the noodle, like the pho, that represent the north, the mi, the noodle represent the south, and the mi quan represent the uh, central the part. Central part. That's why the foreman of the world crawfish and noodle become. Let's talk about 12 years ago. When you started to talk about crawfish, there was only one style, right? It was the boil house from all across the Gulf Coast. And the crawfish was a giant pot of heavily seasoned water. Crawfish were dumped in and left to soak. Then it comes out of the water, then gets seasoned and it ends up on your, in a bucket on your plate. That's not at all what you do. You sat back and thought about, how do I want to eat it? How do my friends want to eat it? How do my customers want to eat it? You created a style that is now all over the country. When you go to Vietnam, you want to go to every place, get fresh shrimp, the shrimp that jump around, the crab, the corn. And that's what the Vietnamese people like. Yeah. Everything fresh. And the quality stuff that we put it in, from the butter, from the garlic, from all the selected seasoning. But you have a cement mixer on the other side of the dining room which you blend your seasonings in. But I've never been here to see the seasonings that go into that. Wait, and, and, <laughs> and, to be honest, nobody allowed to see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, and that's fine. Do you season the water heavily? No, I don't. We have to create a totally different way of cooking. You have to cook to the perfect point that when you get the crawfish out, a piece of junk meat pop out and still have a crunch and still fresh. If I soak the crawfish meat in the season, I defeat the purpose of the taste of the freshness. That is the distinction between the Viet Cajun and the Louisiana Cajun style. We create of that style, we think of that detail. That's why when the Viet Cajun coming out, the seasoning is coached outside. I just create a different style 
without the Cajun, we never have the Viet Cajun. No, it doesn't so, exist. I mean, I still give 100% credit to the Cajun seasoning. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the Cajun cooking style because of how the Cajun people cook give me an idea how to create a different style for me. Your seasoning is your seasoning blend, more garlic than a human should consume, and butter. Yeah. I love it. Right? I love it. This is why you've been nominated for a James Beard. Thank you so much. That, Thank that's you. exactly why. You changed the culture of food. I, I'm going to tell you that crawfish is, is one of the things that you guys do fantastically well, but I think all of the other things as well. It doesn't matter if it's crawfish or season or not. This is the place to be because you and your team and your family specifically are some of the best cooks of seafood that I've ever been around. Crabs, shrimp, clams. You just have a great hand with it. In the family, we kind of discuss. Yeah and talk about, you know, how we cook food. If they say that, this is not taste right, that this is not gonna be on the table. It's magnificent. We talk about how this is so much in family, and so Vincent, Corey, your boys, you know, everybody's part of the business. You got grandma and grandpa here, your wife's generally here, your sisters. That's one of the greatest things about this place is that it's just family. Some of my favorite dishes, what do we got? This is the crawfish. So this is the founder of the Cajun. Yeah. The crab tower, this is blue crab, salt and pepper. Your favorite dish is also the chicken wooden fish sauce. This is the part of crawfish noodle, why the crawfish noodle forming because it's a noodle dish. So this is stir fry noodle dish. We also have pho, we also have some other soup uh, by the day. And that's your favorite turkey neck. <laughs> Right? You know, there's nothing about it that says I should go get crawfish and blue crabs and then throw in a turkey neck on the side. <laughs> that is magical. So you actually go more classic Vietnamese. Oh yes, I love classic Vietnamese. That's definitely my, my comfort, my go-to. There's something that's very special about you guys as a family. You take a month off and go to Vietnam and feed people. We go straight to the area who need it. And they are the one who deliver it and go in there and see how they live their life. See all the orphan kids, how they survive. And they, they have to see that. The young American kid need to see that because we're so peerless. Honestly, I am too. I mean, come to the US, I mean, we, we have all the nice food to eat. But many other parts of the world need it. Yep, that's good to see. Let's talk about crawfish. First off, look at that. It's seasoned on the outside. Just garlic and butter and all this other deliciousness. That's perfect. It's all about how you cook it. It's really weird that you guys are just staring at me. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, right. Here we it looks go. so good. It looks, tastes so good. I don't think I've actually sat down and had crawfish this year. We yet. don't. Yeah. We I just don't because we eat in the kitchen most it. of the time. I'll get back to this because this is sitting in front of me. Chicken wings, fish sauce. Oh, man. I love it so much. Crispy chicken wings, caramelized fish sauce, just that delicious like caramelization and carameliness to it. That's how you eat a chicken wing. We're done. All right, blue crabs, this tower of power that you have over here. So this is basically a hard shell blue crab. Split in half. We'll wash it thoroughly, and then that's when we'll actually start to season the crab. And we'll batter it lightly. And then from there, we'll fry it, we'll take it out. And then we actually won't fry it the full way. We'll fry it just enough to where the batter's uh, crunchy, has texture to it, and then we'll actually finish it in the wok. So the main flavor of the, of the crab you're gonna be tasting, the salt and pepper, is actually coming from the smoke of the wok itself. These are beautiful. I mean, I ask like, how do you eat that? You eat a potato chip, Very you can eat a crab leg. I mean, this and this is crawfish and noodles, right? Yep, yep. Every table. We released our black pepper sauce, but then we actually went to Singapore and we've always heard about the- Singapore chili crabs? Yep. Yeah. And then they always like that, that chili sauce they do. And then we had it and the funniest thing was it reminded us just of the black pepper sauce itself. So you don't actually have to go to Singapore necessarily to try it when you come here. It's kind of the first meal in several years that we ever eat our food here. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, no, most of the time. Are you a seasoned pro at peeling crawfish? Are you uncomfortable with peeling crawfish? Do you just not know how, don't want to ask? That's all right. We're going to take a closer look at peeling techniques next when Eat Like a Local Countdown to Crawfish Fest continues.
We're talking crawfish on this Eat Like a Local primetime special. If you've got a go-to list for crawfish, the patio at the pit room needs to be on the top of it. Thursday through Sunday, they're out there boiling crawfish. I'm telling you, there's something about being able to get some ribs, some brisket, a couple pounds of crawfish. That is one heck of a good weekend. Talking about crawfish, it's finally time to eat. And I'm going to say that there's three of my favorites sitting in front of me, and by no way am I saying one is better than the other by eating one first. <laughs> <laughs> is that fair? <laughs> How often do you eat crawfish? I put down like 20 to, put down like 30 to 40 pounds a year. I mean, I taste them a lot every day, you know, like, we're still trying to figure out how like, after X amount of pounds, how much spice you need to add to our soak and, and try it we, all we, day. We did that too. You know? I think the big thing was purging it properly. If we do it the Louisiana way, you do the purge, let's say we do a basic backyard boil. We'll get an igloo cooler, we'll load it up with water, and then sometimes people don't really pick out the dead crawfish. They'll just use the whole thing. They'll pretty much load it with water. They'll dump it. But it, a lot of the time, the problem is the crawfish may be not as clean as you would expect. So that way you don't have as clean of a shellfish. So like for us, we purge ours three times. Because I grew up like, dude, you're purging, you dump salt all over them. You don't have to put any salt in there. Yeah, no. Yeah. That water's treated. Yeah, you right? I, that, was one thing I, like, water. that was one thing I learned recently that was like, wow, yeah, you don't really need yeah, to add any salt Actually, you're correct. Yeah. You brought the Vietnamese influence in the Cajun aspect, yeah. and you brought the Texas influence that's right. to the Cajun aspect. Yeah. <laughs> Texas boys like it on the outside. Like, yeah. that's just the way it goes. I mean, I have have not had this outside of eating it here, like this style, right. in a very long time. Yeah. Right? And I think it was when the season first kind of kicked off, we came in and said, well, we'll just try it with the dry. And my wife was like, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and she's like, that's, that's the, she's like, I love that too, but I love that too. And it was like, it's kind of cool to see because you can have your cake and eat it too, right? You can right. pick out what you want. And then you all do the sausage, corn, and potatoes. Like that's the, the traditional, but also you personally have like a whole boil menu on the side where it's like mushrooms, broccoli, green beans, Brussels sprouts. Eggs, the, the egg was cool. The eggs are good, yeah. The, the hard-boiled you know, egg yeah. and the crawfish boil is like, that's straight southern Louisiana deep, right? Yeah. And you give me the morning for breakfast. That's but then perfect. you all also <laughs> offer shrimp, snow crab. Yep. I mean, we're about to start getting uh, going on blue crab pretty hard. We do Dungeness and snow crab and shrimp. Yeah. You do everything. Y'all do a lot. Yeah, we, we do literally everything. If there's a shellfish, it can be done. Yeah, and we'll, we'll find a way to make it done. I have literally had clams done in this broth. Yeah. yeah. And it is awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. So I think that a lot of people actually have a, like, they get nervous about eating crawfish. When people come to town, I'm like, we're going for crawfish. They're like, um, I don't really know how to do that. Right. Do you have a style? You know, mine's super backyard style. I just take the head and suck the head and then pinch the tail and bite it out. I don't have to do too much peeling. I will literally, you know, twist it, but I, I bite. Yeah, yeah. You just smash it. And it's feet and then done. Everybody, I mean, how do you guys do it? You just get out of it, huh? Pull it in, twist, suck that out. So like with this, just taking the tail, twist it, right? And that's, that's where you're at. And then right here, you're just gonna pinch that and it pulls right out. And it's just easier to do it with your teeth. But man, I tell you, I've seen some interesting techniques mm -hmm. in the restaurant. I know I've seen videos of uh, Corey doing it, but it's pretty fun to like go out and show people how to do it. Yeah. You know, I think that that's kind of a kick. Some of you are like, why you do it that way? Hey, you know, you get from point A to point B. You peeled it all the way down. How does that work? Or I like the ones that have pulled this apart. Yeah. I had crawfish with a friend one day and they stacked the heads. It was just like on the plate, just do, 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 and then do, 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 and then do, 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 and then they went back and crushed them all at the end. Okay. I saw one like that the other day, yeah. Yeah, I don't understand the whole peel of the whole tail. Because that right there gives you enough to be able to just right. pinch that tail. And be out with that. Get that little pineapple sausage with the, with the heat. <laughs> you got so pineapple good. sausage? It's so good. That's pineapple sausage? Yeah, it's a little pineapple. I, cut it up I definitely got to try that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. Pops, right? It's nice, right? That's nice, yeah. Would I eat that on its own? No, it's just no. better in crawfish. Yeah, Jeez, probably man. not a chance. It's great. Yeah. But while you did not, 100%. I know the season wasn't perfect to begin with. That's about as good as it gets right now, though. 
Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Sizes. I mean, yeah. Easy that's, fill. That's, those are monsters. Ooh, perfect size. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you wanna switch that? We're gonna trade. All right, nice. Yeah, there yeah you go. Crop is trade. I've been eyeing this for a while. See, so like the sauce? I've never been able to do that. I mean, I can, but I still don't know why they, in Louisiana, they call it crawfish butter when yeah. they put butter in there. That's all right, though. Yeah. My wife wouldn't let me put down on the menu crawfish butter. She said, There's, it's not butter. She would confuse her by it. <laughs> mayonnaise and ketchup, but craw crawfish <laughs> butter. Because <laughs> once we're, I guess we're right there, right? Yeah. That's I mean, pretty good. It's good, right? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. We'll, trade, we'll trade around. <laughs> crawfish trade. I like this. But look at that. That's one of these where you get in here and you pop that out and hopefully you can do that right there and get your claw. Let me have that wet. Where's the sweetness coming from in that? Oh, it's a lot of the seasonings we have. I got spicy. I feel good. This is your new andouille that you're using? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this is paper towels. Paper towel rolls, yeah. baby. Yeah. Rain supreme. When it comes. I agree. We're just being fancy right now. <laughs> this is fun, Super yeah. Cool. I mean, whose corn do I want to light my face on fire? <laughs> that, 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 that's like what it really boils down to. If you want to light your face on fire? This one right here. That. that one looks terrible. <laughs> More crawfish content coming your way when Eat Like a Local Countdown to Crawfish Fest continues. back with another place to get your crawfish fix. It's called Hot and Buttered. So Hot and Buttered is a pop-up inside of Tequila's in the Heights. So delicious cocktails, fantastic crawfish. It's a bona fide crawfish fest right out of the boil. Get yourself a pound, two, five. Don't forget those snow crabs. I think if anything from this, this crawfish festival and this crawfish shows, I think people need to understand that it's not just buying a sack, dumping it in a boiling water and seasoning it and going. Right, there is steps to it. There are things that make the experience so much better that every single one of these is alive before we did it. It's been purged before we did it. And then the thought process behind each one of the seasoning blends, no matter where you're at, right? There's a lot of thought behind this. These guys are doing the boils all the time. That boil is constantly rolling throughout the year, right? Get your shrimp, get your crabs. We all want this flavor. Whether it be crawfish season or not, enjoy it. But why it's crawfish season, you gotta hit it hard. Enjoy Crawfish Fest coming up. Head on out, we'll be out there. Come see us. Corey be out there cooking with us. Yes, I will. Thank you guys. Yeah, man, thank you for having us. Lou, I love you. Brooks, same. Love you, baby. Corey, you know how I feel. Thank you for doing this today. I'll see y'all at Crawfish Fest. I'll be back there with Corey, working that VIP tent. Oh yeah, we are eating a lot. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Just waiting on time? I do that all the time. See what I did there? Yeah, that's gotta be great TV right there. <laughs> it's always that one that needs to like <laughs> Anything that I've said the past five minutes is out. <laughs> that's all he's gonna hear tonight.